you very much for introducing me. So uh, first of all, to tell you a little bit why people are interested in transparent screens, I'll just go over a few potential applications, but there are actually many. So one is for this heads-up display, so you can kind of have some information in front of you while you're driving, so you don't have to look down. And this has potential uses in cars and uh, airplanes. Then Google Glasses are becoming more and more popular. And uh, finally, action movies. So these days, it's pretty hard to find an action movie that doesn't have transparent displays in them. Uh, so uh, there are many different approaches that uh, people uh, follow to implement transparent screens. I'll tell you about our particular approach and its uniqueness. Uh, but just to tell you a little bit about what are actually uh, some of the potential markets. So the market that people are particularly interested in has to do with this field of digital retail. When you think of uh, windows of shops, they didn't change much since we started having shops for the last five or 10,000 years. Uh, but so there are clearly big opportunities there. And that's uh, this field of digital retail is something that I strongly believe will uh, happen basically in the next 10 years. So here are just some of the concepts that you could explore. Uh, so uh, you could have uh, new ways of advertising. So summer dresses on sale now, only seven left. Or you could play a tra trailer of a video game. Uh, you could have a catwalk uh, instead of, uh, of a model in front in shop window. You could also do interactive shopping and uh, after hour shopping. So what's our approach? Well, if you just take a, a piece of glass and a projector like we are using here, and you try to project on it, you're not going to see anything. That's kind of the point of glass. You want light to get through. So what we do is we embed into glass resonant nanophotonic uh, objects which scatter light at only one wavelength. Let's call it blue for now. And uh, if I shine laser light of that exact wavelength onto the glass, I'll be able to make a strong image. Uh, but uh, since there is only a tiny bit of light in that exact wavelength of all the light that surrounds us, light will, uh, the glass will be largely transparent. And then we make one for blue, one for green, and one for red to have a, a free color display. So uh, this is a, the first thing that we did is we started with silver and nanoparticles. So we would like this to be narrower than it is, and we would like it to have no absorption. But nevertheless, this was sufficient uh, to prove a concept how this works. Uh, and in the first experiment, we combined it with polyvinyl alcohol and put it onto glass and let it evaporate. Now we have better ways of fabricating it. Uh, but even those results were uh, already pretty encouraging. So what you're seeing here is laser projector basically projecting onto this glass and uh, onto our glass, and then you can see the objects behind the glass. Uh, now you can see that in the beginning we were able to do it just for blue color, and also you'll see some waviness in the screen the way uh, how this was made. So since then we made improvements on uh, both of those fronts. Uh, but let me tell you first about our advantages. So this could be done very cheap. Uh, so in, uh, in interactions with glass manufacturers, we believe this could be done as low as $1 per meter squared. It will have a very broad viewing angle. These images, you can see them f uh, from almost any angle. We actually brought a demo uh, so you can go see it next door uh, during the break. Uh, you can uh, do it uh, using off-the-shelf projector. You don't need to develop special projectors for this. And uh, you could potentially have easy aftermarket installation. So it could be just a sheet of polymer which you could potentially later put onto the already existing glass. Uh, and uh, here is some progress uh, that we made. So first of all, as you can see, we did a red color. Then we are making progress on multiple colors. Or uh, for example, as uh, shown here, we are still working to improve colors. Uh, and then uh, we also started developing new concepts. So this is a concept that could be potentially even cheaper. And uh, the idea here is that we, you would embed, let's say, blue scattering nanoparticles and uh, make them form a shape that you want, in this case, a smiley face. And then you can shine light uh, blue light from the bottom, so it does. you don't even need projector in this case. And uh, uh, the light will scatter out of the glass only there where the particles are present. So to show you how this looks like before it's illuminated, you can see uh, this shape of a star wig. In principle, you wouldn't even have to see that shape. But uh, then when you light it up, actually you can see, in this case, a blue star, or in this case, a red star. Or uh, here you can see vague uh, sign of MIT, Ultimately, you know, we could make it uh, be invisible, but then when you light it up, you can see MIT very clearly. And uh, this is to be compared with uh, 
you know, the things that people usually use that have been used for the last 60 years for a similar purpose, uh, which, uh, you know, are not even transparent. So here it'd be just a completely transparent glass, and the moment that you would actually want to use it, you would light it up, and then you would see a shape like this. And then uh, Leon actually also asked us, uh, so you wrote MIT, can you write the Spande? Uh, and we actually currently do it by hand. Uh, so it's like, I was like, oh, this is like many letters, right? Uh, but then Emma from our group worked hard and she actually managed to do it. Uh, so you can see here is like only vaguely you can see the Spande, but then when you light it up, you get like quite a nice sign. Then another thing that we have been uh, working on that we are also excited is combining our laser projection scheme with a notch filter. So notch filter in this case reflects only very narrow blue light. So you can think of it as a mirror which is transparent for all wavelengths uh, except blue and then it uh, reflects blue very strongly. So when you do that, basically what will happen is that uh, on this side you'll see the image, but if you look at it from the back, you will not see an image, you'll just see a transparent screen. And that's indeed what happens. So when you look at it from the front, you can see sign MIT, but when you look at it from the back, you know, so somebody's looking from the front, sees the image MIT, when you look at it from the back, it's completely transparent. Uh, let me show you the same image, but now actually zooming onto the object in the back, just taking photograph, photograph a little bit different, and that again, uh, it would be like something that you could see, let's say it's, it's a, either a shop or a restaurant could have some very vivid uh, image or a movie playing from the outside, then you would walk inside, look out, and it would be just uh, look like plain glass. And uh, in terms of business development, so we, were, we have been contemplating starting a company. Uh, so and thanks to the Spande and Alpi, we had close to 100 meetings with various potential industry partners, including consumer electronics firms, automotive firms, airplane manufacturers, glass manufacturers, and so on. But now we are actually leaning towards, instead of starting a company, to look into licensing opportunities. And that's something we'll be starting conversations this summer. So if you know uh, people who would be interested, please uh, send them. We have quite a few people who are interested, but if you have uh, know some more, please send them our direction. And on that note, I would like to thank my collaborators who did all this hard work, and I would like to thank you for your attention.